today we're going to be talking about a little project that I worked on and thought it would be pretty interesting to share with you guys and that is the budget ranch trunk and without any further ado let's now get into it we're going to be going over three primary points the first starting off with this is the budget obviously it can't be a budget ranch truck if you don't have some type of budget set for it that budget isn't relatively low so i thought a pretty good budget would be five thousand dollars for everything and the primary reason why i thought five thousand was a pretty good uh, ballpark number to go for was one uh, it's a number or at least a dollar figure that I was able to save up for in about three, four months. And so it was relatively easy to save up to that point. And at the same time, <clears throat> it also is a good number to set for getting a quality truck. That's not going to be a plague that's breaking down. That's a nightmare that you have to put a lot of money into to get running, to get started. This is going to be a truck that is reliable that runs well and can do the tasks that you need it to do and i was able to get the truck itself personally for 3500 and then i honestly spent about another 200 250 250 dollars uh, on the equipment that we're talking about the kind of tools or mods whatever you want to call it uh, for making it uh, suited for pulling trailers and doing all that kind of stuff so I came in at actually under $4,000, but I wanted to set $5,000 just for extraneous, and that was a good round number to work towards. Also, it's a number that in comparison is really good because if you look at the brand new 2018 um, Ford F-150 King Ranch truck, which is a ranch truck, it's $52,000, so I kind of wanted a comparison of $5,000 versus $50,000, and what you can get for $5,000 versus this $50,000, and actually I was pretty impressed because one of the funny things is the brand new 2018 trucks can only have, or they have a towing capacity of 7,000 pounds, whereas, at least I googled this, so uh, the 2002 Ford F-150 that I have has a towing capacity of 8,800 pounds. So a 1,800 pound advantage on the budget ranch trucks side. So I thought it was pretty cool and really awesome to kind of see. So next, uh, the next part to it, or part two, is the truck that I picked. Now once again, and I can be rolling in, you know, footage of the truck that I picked, but it is a 2002 Ford F-150 XLT Super Crew Cab. And this is one of the places, and the reason I want to break this into its own point, is this is actually a point where you could save more money. So if you want to do this for even tighter budget, if say you didn't have the five grand, or you wanted to come in less, you could actually opt for a truck that's just as capable, but minus the Super Crew Cab. So this is one of the things that uh, I did have to choose though, and that is because I do a lot of hauling of people, so having the full four doors or the six uh, person capacity of the truck was really important for me. And yeah, so if you don't need that, you could certainly get a regular cab or a extended cab. I think that's the correct terminology for it essentially, uh, which is basically the no rear seats or the half back doors. So lastly, getting into the options that make it, this truck a ranch truck. Of course, just about any truck can be a truck, but there are certain things that make a truck more suited toward being a ranch truck than just a standard kind of truck that you use to haul the trash to the landfill kind of thing. So starting off with the first two points, and these are kind of internal, or when you're picking your truck out, you need to make sure that it has these two points. And that is one, it needs to be four wheel drive. Personally, I don't think they should make a truck without four wheel drive, I think that's kind of stupid, but your truck needs to be able to be a four wheel drive truck. Because oftentimes when in a ranch setting, there's going to be a lot of off-road driving and you need to make sure that you have the capability to go off-road. Also, when it comes to pulling heavy trailers, uh, it's better to have the torque of your engine go into all four wheels as opposed to just two of them. So the next thing is also kind of 
regardless to brand of truck you go with and the type of fuel it consumes, you need to make sure that you get a uh, V8 because, like I said, this truck, um, my budget truck project, it has a towing capacity of 8,800 pounds, but the reason why it has that is because it is a V8. So then, nextly, you can have a really great you know, towing capacity truck, but if you don't have any way of hitching it up, it's really ineffective. So what I have, and as the video shows, I have a three ball plus a hook, and this is made by Reese Tow Power. Now you can go with whatever you need, but personally, from my experience at like doing hauling hay trailers, flatbeds, horse trailers, they all tend to have different uh, ball hitches on them. So I said to screw that whole system of having to carry multiple hitches, I just went with a three ball hitch so that I always have the right size when I need it instead of having to carry multiple hitches in case I don't have the right size on the truck. So that's what I did there. And then I opted for the hook on it because I like the ability of, of being able to pull things and just have that extra capability of the hook on there so that in case I need it, I can have it. So the next thing that you're going to need, and it's pretty important, is, uh, is ratchet straps. So ratchet straps are really important, but specifically a one type of ratchet strap. Now you can get whatever brand you want, pretty much whatever brand you can find on Amazon, but you need to make sure whichever one you get that it's a two inch wide by 20 inch long. And the reason why is I learned this kind of the hard way with the one inch wide by like 10 foot, whatever the heck ratchets. And that is that if you have too thin of a ratchet and you're trying to strap down like hay bales and stuff, the ratchet strap is just gonna cut through your hay and it's not gonna actually effectively put compression on your load that you're trying to haul. And so you need to make sure that you get the two inch wide straps because they do a better job at putting down compression on the load of hay as opposed to just cutting through it. Also, the reason why I like the 20 foot, uh, two inch by 20 foot ratchets is because when you're hauling things like panels for horse fencing, um, they're gonna be better for having the length to go around and through and weave through the uh, paneling. So they are really nice to have uh, for that reason as well. And I still factor this as one of the more important pieces is a bed liner. It's often overlooked because a lot of trucks already have bed liners, but do trust me, you're going to want a bed liner because uh, regardless to what bed is on your truck, whether it's steel or whether it's aluminum, it's gonna get dented up, it's gonna get dinged up, or if it's steel, it's gonna rust out and create holes in the bed that is really bad and you do not want any of those types of things happening. So I highly recommend getting a bed liner. My truck already had a bed liner on it when I bought it so it was kind of a nice savings for me but I definitely would have had a bed liner put in had it not had one just for the fact that like I said you don't want your bed rusting out and you don't want holes in it and you just overall want to avoid all the damage that can come from having a bed in ranch truck kind of life because it's a very rough life you're throwing things in there without much care and like i said it's bound to either damage or put a hole in it so the bed liner just helps alleviate that there are other things i do recommend too and those would be a toe, toe straps and a come along once again i want to keep this on a budget so i don't want to be set I don't want to be saying, oh, you know, get a bull bar, get a uh, like LED light bar strip, get a winch, because these are types of things that sure they'd be helpful, but they're not going to be crucial to your daily tasks. And they're not really going to be that beneficial, except for maybe the LED light bar that might be helpful. But for the most part, most of those things are kind of arbitrary and more to make the truck look cool than to actually be useful. I mean, certainly a winch can be helpful, but like I said, I doubt I would ever really come into a situation where I needed that. 
and especially with the whole fact of if you have a come along it's a lot more portable so you can set it up exactly where you need it and it's not attached to your truck so just kind of some personal opinions on that stuff but this has been the crucial gear that or kind of like equipment to go along with your truck to help make it more capable hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and as always i'm out